Um, Mrs. Bolton? What are you thinking kicking me out of my room? Me and my son are going to be living in this high-rise condo without you from now on. But this is my house. No, this is me and my son Carlo's house. Honestly, how many times do I have to tell you until you understand? The husband is the pillar of the household. Which means that Carlo is the owner of this house, and I am Carlo's mother. Meaning that I have the right to decide whether you can live here or not. But you still repeatedly insist that this is your house, acting all arrogant. I hate your face so much it makes me sick. Why did Carlo marry a woman like you in the first place? Mrs. Bolton, you keep calling me you, but I have a name, Erica. A bitch like you doesn't need a name. <laughs> I hate you from the bottom of my heart. Leave. I understand that you enjoy insulting me, your son's wife, but haven't you noticed how both your husband and your son look at you? I said this is me and Carlo's room, not yours. Besides, I already decided to divorce my husband. And isn't your husband telling you to quit it and just come home already? It's already been three months since he barged into our house and just started living here. Not to mention that you kicked me out of the room that I'm the owner of. It doesn't matter. You just have to divorce Carlo and we won't have any more problems. What? Divorce? I don't need a man so poor that he can only get a shabby apartment to live in. Once I divorce him, I'll have no choice but to move in with my son. Which means that I'll automatically be able to live in this high-rise condo, in a room on the 40th floor. That's why you're divorcing him? Who cares about the reason? I'll divorce him if I want to. Anyways, I'm not going to let you return to this house. What do you plan on doing with my stuff? At the present, I only have my phone and wallet in the bag I'm putting them in. Hire a moving company to pick up your stuff for you. I'll let you do that at least. I'm not going to let you come back here no matter what. Is that so? Fine, I understand. If you come, I'll call the police for trespassing. That's exactly what I want to tell you, but all right. Huh? I guess if this means that I no longer have to live with you, then all right, I guess. Hi, Carlos. I know you're currently on a business trip, but this is urgent. Oh. Uh, hi, Erica. Is now a good time? Yep. I'm free right now. What's the matter? You were taking a day off today, right? Your mother kicked me out of our house. What? I went to buy some stuff at the convenience store and she locked me out. You didn't bring a key with you? I thought I did, but when I looked at my key holder, only my house key was gone. I think your mother must have stolen it. Jesus, that woman is going too far. Hey, Carlo. I understand painfully well now that your mother has wanted to live in a high-rise condo for a long time now, but I feel that recently she's been a lot more fervent about it than usual. She's even saying that she's going to divorce your father so she can live at our house. What? She said that? I'm sorry, but I ended up unconsciously muttering under my breath, this family is done for. It must have been that serious if she made you say that. I'll send you screenshots of the conversation we had by text after she kicked me out of our condo. I'll let you decide whether to show it to your dad or not. All right. Got it. Well, that's the situation. What she's doing seems a bit strange, even for your mother. I think something must have happened to her. Oh, that reminds me. Dad told me this recently, but apparently the daughter of an old friend of Mom's married an extremely rich capitalist. By your old friend, do you mean that person your mother sometimes insults and complains about? Yep, that person. For some reason, Mother sees her as a rival. Didn't she lose her husband 20 years ago and raised her daughter basically on her own? Yep, 
Mother apparently thought that she was better than her as a woman because she had a husband that her friend didn't. But her daughter married a capitalist and a filthy rich one at that. And apparently the newly married couple proposed themselves that she live with them on the 30th floor of a high-rise condo. Oh, and we live on the 40th floor, so it's two floors higher. Yep, that's it. I don't think it matters since we live in different buildings, but apparently Mother doesn't think that way. I see. I think I now understand what your mother is thinking, but I won't just let her take over our house because of something that stupid. Agreed. Anyways, we have to do something about you being kicked out. Why didn't you contact the landowners? Yeah, I considered about that too, but given the timing, I thought that it would be better if we set into motion that plan we were talking about. Huh? Oh, that plan. I was thinking of letting you decide when we do it, but... Given the situation, are you sure it's alright? It is a bit inconvenient, but the preparation is almost complete, so there shouldn't be a problem. Now I just need the cooperation of you and your father. Got it. I'll contact Dad about it. Thanks. I'm counting on you. On the other hand, though, what are you going to do tonight? I'm going to stay in the business hotel near the station. I intend on going as soon as I can check in. Alright, got it. I'm so sorry about my mother. I'm going to support what you're trying to do as much as I can. Yep, I'm counting on you. Oh, looks like I need to get back to work soon. Thanks, I know you're busy. Take care. Yep, don't push yourself too hard. The moving company you hired came. Yep, it's just as they told me. All they have to do is take all the stuff in my room, so you don't need to do anything. Yeah, yeah, I don't care, as long as you leave. By the way, I heard you sent your husband the divorce papers? Yep, I mean, why would I live with him when my son lives in a high-rise condo like this? I don't need a husband that lives in a shack of an apartment anymore. I got a text from him earlier saying that he turned in the divorce papers as well, so... Now me and Carlo can live together, just the two of us as a family. Carlo says he's going to talk to the people at the moving company, so I'll go and watch a movie or something. In my opinion, it would be best for you not to get too ahead of yourself, though. Erica! Mm. Mm. Is something the matter? What's the meaning of this? Why? I understand that your stuff is gone, but where is Carlo's stuff? Why did everything except my stuff disappear? I'm going to need you to take your stuff out of the room soon as well. Oh, uh, what? Why? But me and Carlo are supposed to live in this high-rise condo together from now on. We decided to give up that room for rent. Huh? What do you mean? I thought I explained this to you before, both when I got married to Carlo and when you suddenly started living with us. The room at the high-rise condo is something I inherited from my late father. Huh? Me, the owner, am no longer going to live there. So instead of just making it an empty room, I decided to give it up for rent to earn some revenue. Hold on, wait. Your father had a large enough income to buy a room at a high-rise condo like this? Yes, he was. He ran a company. You mean, he was a CEO? Also, I inherited his money, and your son Carlo is an employee there. What? Carlo's an employee at the company you own. Yep, he's the head of the marketing department. Ah, uh, are you lying? No, I'm not. Then, does that mean that I threw away my new life at a high-rise condo by my own doing? Yep, that's what it means. What did you say? If that's the case, Erica, it's fine if you continue living here. I told you I was giving it up for rent. 
must forget anything happened and continue living together just like before. Speaking of which, if you're a CEO, then that must mean that Carlos struck a fortune with you. You should have told me about it sooner. How was I supposed to know? Let's get along from now on, right, Erica? Please, pack your stuff and leave in three days. Huh? Decide for yourself where you're going to move to. But that's going to be a problem for me. My parents' house no longer exists. I can't go home to my husband's house anymore either since I already sent him the divorce papers. What do you want me to do? Well then, goodbye. Where are you telling me I should go? Mm. Erica! Carlo? Mm. Hey! At least you're still my ally, right? Mm. Mother. Carlo, I'm so glad you replied. I'm going to be taking on Erica's last name. And I'm going to be living with Erica and her mother from now on. What? Goodbye. Carlo, hold on! Mm. Carlo! Help your mother, please! I have nowhere left to go! Her one-sided rivalry with an old friend and her bullying of me. My mother-in-law divorced her husband based on a whim and kicked me out of the room I owned at a high-rise condo because she didn't know I was the owner. She thought she had saved her pride and was headed to victory, but in actuality, she was heading in the opposite direction. She must have never thought even in her dreams that she was diving headfirst into the worst possible direction. She was able to receive some property during the property division with her husband after divorce, but it seems that because of her rivalry with this old friend of hers, she was a careless spender of money. So, she spent almost all of her money on her new apartment. In this way, she lost everything, and the difference between her and our friend was almost that of heaven and hell. My mother-in-law had no skills to speak of, so now she lives a life of extreme poverty, juggling multiple low-paying jobs at once. I pity her, but I have no intention of helping her. Veronica, I'm sorry. Is it okay if we go to the movie another day? It looks like your dad and I have to go to a funeral today. Huh? Did someone die? Yeah, one of our managers from work. We know his daughter quite well, so we really should go. We had no idea the funeral was today. We just found out about it. We shouldn't be there for too long, so we should be back by dinner. Okay, I understand. We'll go see the movie next time. But bring something back for dinner. Mom, help! What do I do? Where are you? We're still at the funeral home. Is something wrong? Do you want me to call you? Don't call me! Huh? Someone's in our house! I'm hiding! Help me! What? I was sitting in my room the whole time. I heard someone unlock the door and come in. I thought it was you, so I went downstairs and I saw someone I didn't know standing in our living room. I don't think they saw or heard me. What? You're kidding. Where are you now? I'm hiding in a closet upstairs. I don't think they know anyone is home. I'm scared. Are you sure it's somebody you don't know? You're sure it's not Grandma or anyone? It's not, I'm sure! It's a young woman! Okay, don't move from where you are. We're coming home right away. Your dad's already on the phone with the police. I think the person is upstairs now. I hear a bunch of things getting knocked over and thrown around in the next room. We're in the car now, we'll be there as soon as we can. Leslie, where are you right now? Oh, hey sis, long time no see! I'm in my house, like usual, why? You better take what you stole and bring it back here right now. What? 
What? What I stole? What are you talking about? You snuck into our house while we were at the funeral and ransacked the place, didn't you? I have no idea what you mean. Did a burglar break in or something? You really should lock up properly when you leave. Be careful from now on, okay? I hear thieves will come back to the same place over and over if it's easy pickings. The door was locked and deadbolted, but the locks were either picked or someone had a key. And Mom told me that you went over to her house this morning and were only there for a few minutes before you left again. She said after you left, she saw that the spare key to my place was missing from the key holder on her wall. What? <laughs> it must be her imagination. She's old. She's delusional. I think she's been reading too many mystery novels. $3,000 in cash, my brand new bags and shoes, and a prepaid visa card I had on my dresser. Even my daughter's piggy bank. I told you. It wasn't me. Where's your proof? If you don't have any proof, don't start accusing me of something like this. What's that? Veronica was home the whole time. So? As soon as the police sirens could be heard, the person started to panic and ran out the door. This is the picture Veronica took from her window of the person running away. She sent it to me. This is obviously you. Oh, this picture is so blurry, you can't even make out the face. That doesn't prove it's me. Don't accuse someone of being a thief if you have such terrible evidence. So you're still going to pretend that you know nothing about this. Veronica confirmed it was you. She's never seen you before because you never attended any of our family get-togethers. But when I showed her my wedding photos, which you were in, she said that's the person. Veronica saw your face while you were in the house. That doesn't prove anything. Are we done here? This is getting annoying. Veronica probably just made a mistake. What? Stop acting like this. Do you have any idea how badly you scared my daughter? Don't blame this on me! You brought this all on yourself. You're just now finally getting what you deserve. What? Your family is poor, yet you go walking around town with your designer bag so everyone can see. That's probably why the burglar targeted you, don't you think? It looks like you got what you deserved, doesn't it? Walking around like you're something you're not, always thinking you're great when you're not. If someone wants to have brand name or designer things, that's their own decision to make. I worked hard and saved up for those things. Why is that the only thing you're talking about? Don't act like you're something you're not. It was just by chance that you got married. Daniel just happens to have strange taste in women, that's all. I just think he felt bad for you because you're not good at anything. You're not even very fertile, if you know what I mean. He doesn't even know that the person you really love is my husband, does he? Wait, what? You think I love Marcus? Why? Yeah, yeah, now who's the one pretending they don't know what's going on? Back before you started dating Daniel, it was really Marcus that you loved, wasn't it? What? I guess I'll tell you now, even though it doesn't matter at this point. Back when your company and my company had a client party together, I saw it all. You and Marcus snuck off outside together, away from the party. What? What are you talking about? Don't pretend that you don't remember. I saw it. I can tell your broken heart still hasn't healed after all this time. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't get it, do you? That's the whole reason why I decided to steal Marcus from you in the first place. How did it feel to have the man you loved stolen by your sister? What? You're kidding. That's the reason you told Marcus you loved him and started dating him? That's right! But I did it for your own good. 
It would have been so sad to see him dump you later because you're so plain and talentless. I guess I've had it out for you for a long time, haven't I? I can't stand to see you have nice things. Just the thought of it makes me sick. You're inferior to me in every way. How dare you go around acting like you're anything special? Oh my god. How self-centered and malicious can you be? You're horrible. Whatever. And you know what? I couldn't believe how quickly Daniel proposed to you after you two started dating. I was like, what? Is he crazy? He wants to marry that thing? You'd already entered your 30s and you're not very attractive. Daniel could have done so much better. He must be a really kind person to take someone like you in. I bet he gives to charity and helps at homeless shelters too. <laughs> Just talking to you is making me sick. I can't believe we're related. Just hurry up and give me back all the money and things you stole from us. Veronica was saving up all that money to buy a new bag for herself. If you really think I stole it, why don't you just come to my house and look for it? I didn't steal anything, so you won't find anything of yours here. And if Veronica wants a bag, just buy her one. If you sell the brand name bag you have in your hand, you'll have her money back right away, won't you? This one was a present from Daniel, so I'm not selling it. Oh, did you bug him long enough that he finally caved in and bought you what you wanted? This is so funny. But you won't even buy Veronica one bag despite all the ones you had? I feel bad for her. What if you tried adjusting your lifestyle a bit? You know you're low class. Start acting like it. Leslie, where are you? What? I'm at home. Where else would I be? I've got something I need to talk to you about. What is it? We had another burglar break into our place. We all went out for dinner, and when we came home, our house was trashed even worse than last time. Really? That's hilarious! You really don't learn, do you? You must be an idiot! That's what you get for being stupid! I can't stop laughing! I can't stop laughing either. Huh? I really didn't think they'd come back and do it this quickly, but I figured it was worth a shot. I wanted to be doubly sure. What are you talking about? Obviously, I'm talking about the burglar. We wanted to be extra careful, so I even had someone watch the house while we were away. Marcus helped us. Huh? Your husband. When I asked him to help me, he didn't hesitate. He said it would be a great way to prove if it was you or not. He assured me that you were a good person and would never do anything terrible like this. He wanted to help prove your innocence. He told me he was going out drinking with his buddies tonight. I told him to tell you that so you wouldn't suspect a thing. You were the only one I ever suspected of doing it. I just knew it had to be you. I know you saw me post on social media that I was taking my family out for dinner tonight. You're the one in all the pictures ransacking my place. I knew it had to be Crazy Leslie. What? Last time, Veronica was home when you broke in, so I thought you'd be a little more cautious the second time. But Marcus hid in the exact same spot Veronica did, and you still didn't suspect a thing. You really don't learn, do you? You must be an idiot. You're so stupid, I can't stop laughing! Shut up! And why did you go and get my family involved? That's what I should be saying to you. What were you thinking getting my family involved in your squabble with me? Th this time the pictures came out perfect. He even got video. You can't talk your way out of it this time. Whatever, I don't care. I'll admit that it was me this time, but what about last time? You've got no proof linking me to that, do you? You've got to be kidding. You're still going to pretend that it wasn't you. 
I have an eyewitness. You're a thief. I hope you go to jail for this. You're exaggerating. This is just a little fight among sisters. What? You can't report this to the police. It's not a real crime. This is a civil matter, not criminal. I know you're not very smart, so I'll be nice and explain it to you. Just use your hat. If one sister steals something from their sister's room, do the parents file a police report? No, because it's not a crime. This is no different than that. I'm your sister and I took something from your room. No big deal. Is that what you think? You're insane. Huh? We're not kids and we don't live together. What you did is 100% illegal. In fact, Marcus thinks I should charge you. Wait, what? How could that be? I can get in trouble for this? Wait, I'll send you some of the messages I got from Marcus tonight. He said, I followed Leslie. She's at your parents' house. She took everything she stole from your house and hid it in the shed in your parents' backyard. I went in after she left and checked. All your stuff is here. Your brand name items, your necklaces, your prepaid cards, everything. Veronica's piggy bank, too. I can't believe she did something this stupid. I had no idea she was this kind of person. Tomorrow, I'm going down to the police station and reporting her. Maria, I'm really sorry. Those are his exact messages. He really said that? You mean what I did was an actual crime? Of course it was. You broke into a house that wasn't yours and took things that weren't yours. Hmm, I wonder what the penalty for this would be. Do you think it's just fines and probation or actual jail time? Let me do a quick search for you. It seems a person stealing over $50,000 can be fined up to $10,000 and or get up to 10 years in prison. You definitely took over $5,000 worth of things from me. So, have fun! Stop! Maria, please, you're my sister. Don't report this! And tell Marcus to stop, too! Huh? Why? What do you mean, why? Do you really want your own family member to be known as a criminal? Well, it seems they are, so you did the crime. There's no denying it. There's nothing we can do about it now. What do you mean there's nothing we can do about it now? Oh, wait. I get it. I know what this is about. Look, I'll persuade my husband to spend the night with you. In fact, I'll let you borrow Marcus for a whole day, 24 hours. Huh? I know you've always loved him, but he never felt the same about you, right? If you want to sleep with him for just one day, I promise I won't get angry. I mean, if it's only one day, and you're aware it's only for one day, I guess it's not a big deal. What the... What the heck are you talking about? First off, Marcus isn't a thing. You can't just lend him to people. And I think you've got the wrong impression here anyway. Let me explain this to you. The wrong impression! The day of that client party, the day you saw me go outside with Marcus, it was because he came up to me and asked to speak to me in private. Huh? I wasn't in love with him. He told me that night he was in love with me. What? That's not possible! Why? I don't know why he loved me, but he said he fell in love with me the first time he saw me. But I was already in love with Daniel when Marcus told me that, so I turned him down. I told him we could still be friends and colleagues, though. That's all. What? But then... Does that mean I didn't steal the man you loved from you? Daniel is the only man I loved. Liar! Stop trying to act like you didn't love Marcus. I don't believe you. I don't care if you believe me or not. Just ask Marcus yourself and you'll see. You mean I was his second pick? I was his runner-up? Why would you look at it that way? Why don't you do yourself a favor and stop acting like Marcus is just a piece of property? He's not with you because he couldn't be with me. He got to know you, fell in love with you, and married you. Shut up! Shut up! I don't care about that. More importantly, I have to stop him. I don't want to become an ex-convict. 
Well, you have to become a convict before you become an ex-convict. You have to help me! What? Are you crazy? You did all this yourself, and I was the victim in this. I've got no reason to help you. I hope you live out the rest of your life in prison. What? This was all a joke! Yeah, that's it. It was just a joke. It was supposed to be funny. Why won't you just let it go? I'm not going to let this go. You scared the crap out of my daughter with your stupidity. Besides, I don't think I could persuade Marcus not to report you at this point. You won't know if you don't try! He's really kind. While you beg him not to report me, just start crying and I'm sure he'll cave in. You're his wife and you honestly believe that? Marcus is furious right now. Not only did you do that to me, but he feels like you betrayed him as well. Huh? The first time you broke into my house and stole things, whose funeral do you think we were at? Huh, some manager at your company, right? That's right. When I started working there, I had no idea what he was like. But he was a stickler for the law and did everything by the book. He even got angry if someone so much as stole a pen. We found out later that he'd actually been a police officer for a long time before he changed professions. He was a police officer? He was very well respected, not just in our company. Then during his funeral, we had to fake an illness just so we could leave without causing a big scene. And when we got home, we find out it was my own sister who broke in and stole our money and belongings. We didn't know that man very well. We were friends with his daughter. But Marcus knew him very well and respected him so much. Marcus loved how he stood for justice. No matter how small the issue was, he was like Marcus's mentor. And here, Marcus's own wife goes off and commits a crime during his mentor's own funeral. Marcus will never forgive you for that. Oh my god, I didn't know that. I don't want to go to jail. If I just give you everything back, it'll be okay, right? I can't believe you went and got my own husband involved in this. You have to do something. You have to help me. Don't blame this on me. You made your bed, now you'll have to lie in it. This is all because you don't care about anyone other than yourself. Without any remorse, you went and stole from your sister and terrified your niece. You didn't even care when I told you how badly you scared Veronica. Instead, you decided to break in again. You're a horrible person. Okay, I get it. I'm terrible, I understand. Please, just don't press charges. Hmm... Then can you keep a promise? I want you to change the way you're living, just a little bit. Huh? Repeat after me. I'm a horrible person. I'm the scum of the earth. From now on, I will never bother another human being, and I will live a modest and quiet life. I'm a horrible person. I'm the scum of the earth. From now on, I'll never bother another human being, and I will live a modest and quiet life. Okay, I said it. Is that enough for you? It's a promise, right? You won't press charges now? Hmm... No, I'm still pressing charges. What?! That was just a joke. You know, the kind of jokes you love so much? You said yourself a burglar will keep targeting the same house if they think it's easy pickings. I'm not gonna let this go. Your jokes aren't funny. Lassie tried everything she could to get me to drop the charges on her, but nothing worked. To her amazement, not even her husband would come to her defense in this matter. Lassie had done other things in the past to cause trouble with my parents and I. Because of those things and this big incident, our parents reached the end of their rope with her. They cut all ties with her and didn't try to convince me to drop the charges against her. In the end, Leslie wasn't given any jail time for her crime, but she now has a criminal record. She was fired by her company for it as well. Instead of jail time, she was fined quite heavily for her crimes. Not to mention Marcus divorced her over the whole incident. After all of that, my family moved away from that house. 
Our new place is a little far from our office and our daughter's school, but we're living in a beautiful little apartment overlooking a lake now. Our new apartment has a doorman and a security guard. But even with all that, we still make sure we lock up tight when we leave.